Less and Jake is going to be at the Atlantic City Beer Festival this coming weekend. Plus, there is another show in, how do you say it, Stroudsville? Stroudsburg. No, it's not Stroudsburg. Oh. Strausstown. Oh, at the racetrack. Yeah. Yes. Next to Shardlesburg. In the in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know if I want to play a place called Shardlesburg, but eh, anyways. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere. You'll have a great time. But <laughs> the, best, <laughs> the best part is it's only like an hour from the city. So anybody can make their way out there. Um, Krista Meeks, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me. And AC Beer Fest is fun. Uh, you yes. guys are going to have a blast down there. We were actually just in Atlantic City this weekend. Mm -hmm. And so we we warmed the town up for you guys. Um, it's it's a uh, it's they are itching for some live music. Uh, there hasn't so been a good be ska punk scene since the last Warp Tour, which was now two summers ago. Yes. Oh, wow. Which is very sad. Yeah, we did the AC Beer Fest, I think, in 2013. And it was really funny because that was our first time, only only time prior to this one playing it. And uh, they did two sessions that day. Uh, the first was like from 12 to four. And then the second session was like five to nine that night. And uh, so we got there a little after four to, to load in for our show. And everyone was pouring out of the convention center at that time. And they I've never seen people that drunk in my life. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was like my college days times 10, you know. Well, I think it's going to be uh, tenfold this year since everybody's uh, going nuts uh, with with everything open in New Jersey. Uh post quarantine. So it's, it should be a hell of a weekend. Yeah. yeah. Your lesson, Jake is going to be a lot of people's first concert back. Like that's going to be something you talk about for years. Yeah. We're, we're excited. You know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I <laughs> it's interesting. My friend of mine and I were talking today and we're knock on wood, not trying to give me bad vibes, but man, I think once you, we open wide back up like this, I, it's going to be hard. Uh, uh, God forbid if uh, another, uh, a virus or something came along to lock people down because yeah, just cause you know, people have been, been cooped up for 15 months. And I think that uh, once the floodgates open, it's going to be pretty crazy here. Now does a uh, AC beer fest kick off uh, a summer long tour for you guys? Is this the first show back? No, we're actually, uh, we're playing the day before playing June 4th in the middle of Pennsylvania. There's a summer concert series that that's in Bethel, Pennsylvania. It's in the middle of uh middle of uh I think it's between like Allentown and Harrisburg or something. Mm -hmm. So yep. uh, kind of middle of nowhere. We're, we're doing that. It's like a uh, outdoor show. And then we play the the beer fest and that's it. It's only, only two shows. We don't have anything else. Uh, we have some other tours lined up at their way, way down the road. That's a good way to dip your toe back in the water. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've seen some bands that are kind of like, Hey, we're back. We're doing 30 days in a row, but you know, we, we definitely uh, just, you know, I think we wanted to kind of wait and see how things play out. You know, you don't, it'd be hard to, to go from at this point from, I think city to city and this state's wide open and then you go to the next state and it's like, what do you do? You know? So. Yeah. Uh, well, I have a, I have a question for you based on Atlantic city. And since you, you guys have obviously done the beer fest in the past, um, but also uh, you, we've been listening to your podcast. And so I've been dissecting some of your uh, songwriting and uh, and I wanted oh, to no, see. That's if, not good. Well, I want I wanted to see. I know I know Mark Coppas is is listed on the credit as well, but uh, the rest of my life lyrics. Yeah. Is that about Atlantic City? Because nah. you start the song off saying that you fell asleep last last Saturday underneath polluted skies. You walked alone on those Jersey nights and saw the boardwalk start to fall, and that just rings AC to me. Um. Yes. If you want to believe that, that's what <laughs> I think, best answer ever. <laughs> I think our drummer, I always say that about lyrics too, because, you know, even though if I know something's a certain thing, I talk about this on my show, you know, you never, you never want to hurt someone what they think it's about. Like, Man, you wrote that song about my dad. It's like, yes. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> um, but no, so Lesson Jake's first drummer, Vinny, he was the primary lyricist in our band. And I believe that he wrote that about Asbury Park, the boardwalk yeah. down there. But in honor of this weekend in AC, we're going to say it's about AC. <laughs> Sounds good. It's close enough. Big warp tour city too. And, and, and I saw Mark Hoppus is credited on that as well. Was he writing songs with you guys or with Vinny at the time? Mark came down to, yeah. So when we did the record in with the out crowd, this would have been 2005. We decided that uh, we were going to do some co-writing. So I wrote some songs with Butch Walker, wrote with Mark, uh, wrote a song with, um, and I'm blanking on his name. He sang for, I think it's Adam maybe from Our Lady Peace. Um, and then there was a couple other songwriters we did some stuff with, but uh, yeah, and had known Mark forever, you know, touring with Blink 
uh, all those years. And Mark came down and uh, Mark wrote the melody and the chords. Uh, and I think Mark might have come up with it's going to kill me for the rest of my life. I think that's the only lyric he might've come up with. Then he wrote the rest of the lyrics. Um, the song is literally one chord progression for the whole thing, except the bridge part, which our sax player wrote. JR wrote the melody and wrote the, the music to the bridge part. So I had nothing to do with it except give the vocal performance of my lifetime, of course. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, um, you know, it's funny because not having really had a hand in it, um, I've always kind of been objective about songs. Like if it's for the best for the band or if it's a great song, you know, whether it's a cover song or whatever, I have no problems if my heart's in it to get behind it and sing it. So I've always embraced that song and have had no problem that, you know, I didn't write it. Very I cool. love that. So what have you guys been doing during quarantine, getting ready to go back on tour? Is there like Zoom sessions like this? practicing are you together in a studio well, yeah we we zoom uh been zoom zooming once a week uh through this whole thing uh every wednesday is our zoom day so oh. we have, have have band meetings but no we don't really practice like this uh you know we uh did a live stream uh, a couple days ago so we were together and we practiced leading up to that so we we've you know kind of have our chops up but you know we're uh you know, we kind of all at this point, ever, having been together almost 30 years, put our big boy pants on. It's like, hey, rehearse on your own and, and don't get here and F up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do, everyone's going to be hammered anyway. So it doesn't matter. Well, for AC Beer Fest, like I was say, it really doesn't matter. I could probably get up there and make armpit fart noises with, you know, the whole time. People, people are going to love it. <laughs> Great. You know? Well, you guys have been doing it for a few years, so you should be able to just, you know cruise right right back into the the flow of things yeah there's an element and not in a bad way you know there could be automatic pod where uh, the band just phoned it in but um there's an element of automatic pilot of you just you know a, a lot of our catalog and songs are just we know as soon as we start playing and the audience is going to go crazy that's a great position to be in you know so you don't have to there's some songs you don't have to think about as hard as others I'm actually like just getting this level of excitement, just thinking about Saturday. Cause it is, it was on your website. I don't know how often like somebody goes and writes a bio on a website about a band, but it's just talking about like, you guys are the party band, whether it's a sweaty room or an awesome festival, like you just light up the stage and it just goes. And that literally is the excitement we all need right now. Yeah. You know, thank you. We, um, that's one thing we've always prided ourselves on. And, and one way that we've stayed out there for, for as long as we have is we're a live band. You know, we were never, that band that sold, you know, 10 million records. We just, you know, or sold out stadiums. We just kind of, I always give the example, it's the, 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 the turtle, the tortoise and the hare, you know, and we're just kind of cruising along at our own pace. And we built up a great, great fan base and following. And, and we go out and, and our live show is what's kept us out there. People love coming to see us play. One of the greatest compliments is uh, fans, uh, the, their parents uh, would come to the show and say, man, I can't stand anything my, my son listens to, but I like your band. I like your show. <laughs> you know, you guys are fun. Wait, I have to ask how many people tagged you in the meme of the toilet paper gun at the beginning of quarantine saying we figured out why where all the toilet paper went. And it's just less than Jake on stage with the toilet paper gun shooting. There, were, there was a few. There was a few. <laughs> yeah. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that was, it feels like 10 years ago, but it was only what? 12 months ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys put, you guys recorded a new album last year, right? So like, what was that process like, uh, compared to like all the albums before? Um, really the same, you know, we, we actually recorded that record in November, uh, the latter half of November into December of 2019. Oh, okay. Oh, right yeah. before. Yeah. And it was supposed to come out last April and our label said, well, let's shoot for June. And, and then certainly things will open up by August and certainly it'll be open by, <laughs> by October. And they, they actually wanted to shelve the record till, till spring of this year, which wouldn't have mattered again because we were still, no one was doing anything uh, a month or two ago. So we wanted the album to come out because it had been long enough. So we released it. And the, you know, as far as the process, the only thing that was different was it was our first record with our new drummer, Matt, you know, and uh, Vinny's no, no longer with us. So it was, um, you know, obviously different in that respect, but the process of making the record was just, it's just the same. You know, we all have our own home studios that we um, demo uh, our stuff in, which has been for some time now, which you know, you don't have to actually be in the same room together. Uh, so, which, which is good for us because, you know, we want to kill each other sometimes. So, um, but no, but, you know, being able to send our stuff back and forth and, and collaborate. And then, you know, once we get together, we pretty much know what, uh, what songs we're going to do and, and go, go through the process. And everybody in the band's written lyrics over the years. It's just, 
you know, we've always kept the vision and the voice of the band. They were through Vinny's eyes all those years. And, uh, you know, now that he's not not with the band, we had to step up and, and each write lyrics. And, and me, our bass player, Roger, and our sax player, JR, uh, did that for this record. That was that was a question of mine, because uh, I have read that Vinny kind of stepped away, but I, I read it as touring. So I wasn't sure if he was going to stay involved with uh, with behind the scenes uh, lyric and production work. But he's yeah, no. he's, he's yeah, he, stepped um, away. He, yeah, he stepped away. You know, he's got uh, a bunch of projects going on. And, you know, he, he didn't want to be on the road anymore. That was the that was the first thing. And he's got his record label and his toy company, which he's been doing both of those for years. And now he's working with a new band called uh, The Inevitables. So he's been, been put that project together with some other folks. And, you know, he's he's always been busy, but, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, still 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 busy. Well, and, and speaking of Vinny, I, I have to ask, since we got you on the hook right now, who's Jake? Was it? Vinny's family parrot or an English bulldog. I've heard tell, numerous I tell, stories. I used to tell the story that it was a parrot. It was his, it was his parrot's bulldog. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. the, the bulldog, uh, he was only seven or eight. He died. He died in like 95. But uh, because basically we were less than Jake because the parents would like feed the dog steak and lobster and Vinny would be like eating peanut butter and jelly in the corner. <laughs> so they, I'm serious. They'd go like out to eat and bring the dog home steak and, and cut it up and put it in its bowl. And, uh, yeah, he was a big old crazy, sl- you know, slobbery jowl uh, bulldog, uh, crazy full energy, 80 pound bulldog. I once saw him literally hop a couch like a horse. Uh, yeah, he was uh, full, full like- of piss and vinegar. But yeah, he was the band mascot. We were also less than Jake because we'd be practicing in Vinny's parents' uh, spare bedroom. That's where our, our we, we, him and me and Vinny would jam when we first started the band. And inevitably, we get two or three songs in and his mom be banging on the door. What, mom? Jake, stop. Jake can't handle it. He didn't like you know, the dog would be <laughs> whining because of the noise. So we were less oh, than Jake. Uh, that's great. <laughs> so is this- I, hated, I hated the name at first. I thought it was a joke. We put a demo <laughs> tape out and Vinny, Vinny was still living in down south. I was in Gainesville or, you know, at Florida. And he had mailed me that he said, hey, I'm going to mail you some of the cassettes up. You want to pass them out at shows? Yeah, it'd be great. Less than Jake. What the hell does that mean? I <laughs> called him up. I'm like, what, what is he? He's like, well, I don't know. Just we're less than the dog. I didn't couldn't think of anything else. That's the name. Like that's brilliant. Right, well, we'll we'll change that down the road. <laughs> Old stick. <laughs> so, is this the infamous podcast studio? Is this where you uh, record? Which, by the way, the best name ever for a podcast. Chris makes a <laughs> podcast. It just writes itself. Thank you. Yeah, that that stemmed from me growing up. It's it's my uh, my big middle finger to uh, you know, Krista makes a pizza. Krista makes a pie. Uh, okay, so yeah. I'll show you one day, but yeah, Krista makes a podcast, but, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is my, my home studio. So in front of me is, uh, all my equipment. Well, there's guitars over here. You can't, oh, I can turn it. yeah, you can see some of the guitars, oh, the nice. bank, bank of guitars there, but all behind me is all, um, all less than Jake and band memorabilia. I've, I collected one of everything the band ever put out. So it's pretty, pretty, uh, obsessive it's great <laughs> no it's great and because now that we're all adults we actually have places to put them and not just like in a rubbermaid container in our parents yeah, <laughs> garage no, this is, yeah this has been uh i i had all my stuff in in bins like that and then finally i was living in atlanta about 20 years ago and i finally started to put everything together and i went so i'd already been keeping scrapbooks that are in chronological order every ticket stub guitar pick <laughs> sticker like it's crazy like I chronicled everything. So, oh, that's yeah, and, that's and basically great. one of these days I'm going to give it to my kids and they're not, they're just not going to know what to do with it. And by that time <laughs> it'll have no value. So <laughs> oh, here's dad's crap, you know? <laughs> so does that mean there's going to be another uh, coffee table uh, book of memorabilia, like your, uh, like your tour photos? It's funny you say that. Yeah. The, it, we're, there's a talk of, of doing a memorabilia book of kind of everything we did with the stories behind. I, and I touched on some of that in the book. There was, you know, merchandise items in there and what have you but but yeah there's been been some talk of that Very yeah, you cool. guys always have great cover art for all your stuff i mean like how do you guys decide on like where that comes from do you do you just kind of lots find of arguing you like yeah <laughs> <laughs> i feel like every band's the same here <laughs> yeah uh we've been really lucky to have amassed a huge uh 
I don't want to call my our, our artists and our friends a, a collection, but uh, we've amassed a huge uh, array of different f- friends of ours that are artists, you know, over the years, just a, a, a group of people that, you know, and a lot of them are our go-tos, you know, like Pete Wansowski, uh, Peter did our last album cover, Silver Linings, and he he actually came up with the Evolution Kit, our, our mascot, back when he was 15 years old, like in the 90s. Jeez. So, yeah, so he, he's been around with us for ages, and, and it just kind of keeps going from there. Like, a lot of times, you know, now we'll, with social media, we'll get fan art from someone that'll draw something, be like, holy crap, that's really cool, you know, and... You know, do you do other stuff? Can you can can you just draw a picture you see, or can you actually draw like you know something that we want you to create, and and then we'll make a make a new artist friend. Oh, that's awesome. I'm ass- I'm assuming you've seen lots of tattoos of your art. Yes. Has there been any weird ones that just like freaked you out? Oh, the dude that has my face, and it's it it. it, it, it I look really bad. Like, I, I can't, I don't want to say what I, I just, just imagine, like, I look sick. I don't look right. I look like I'm not right. And it's on his thigh. Oh. And, yeah. And it is, let me see if I can find that. I want to show you this. It is, it is Jeez. repulsive. Um, <laughs> I, all, I mean, I'm the girl here thinking that, like, if you're in that area, too, you're just staring into yeah. your eyes the entire <laughs> yeah. time, Chris. Well, that's funny you should say that because he was with a girl last time and I said that to her. I said I can't find it, but anyway, it's it's bad. It's the worst thing ever. And I'm like, you know, and, and they kind of were joking about it, like, you know, when when you're naked with her, I said like you or naked with him, you you have to look at me every time. Yeah. So but there's also another woman, uh fan of ours that on her left butt cheek, I'm not kidding you, the letters are like two inches long. It's less than Jake in bl- our, our logo in black, her left butt cheek. Wow. And she used to come to the shows and moon us and stuff. And um, I'm just thinking of like her boyfriend or husband or someone like, you know, what if they don't like the band? You know, like that'd be a bummer. I mean, that'd be like me with someone that has a, you know, insane clown posse across yeah. her breast or something like <laughs> Yeah, uh, can I? You, know, you just gotta know. embrace it. <laughs> or most of the other butt cheek. There you yeah. go. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Look at the bright side, right? Yeah. So there's been definitely some, and there's been other tattoos that are just, it's horrendous. Just like, but at the same time, it's an honor because who the hell would ever think that, you know, like, I don't think there's any band out there when you start the band, you think any, A, anyone's even going to like your band. B, that they're going to want to buy your album or t-shirt. And then like, now they're getting like, you know, your, your art etched in their skin. It's a pretty big honor. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, back to the podcast because I have been yeah, let's geeking not talking out. About <laughs> right? Well, I could do that all day. Uh, I've been geeking yeah, have out. You listen to their show on. on- <laughs> <laughs> we a lot of fart jokes. A lot. Of, we actually get people get a, us tattooed on them every week. It says Preston and Steve somewhere. It's an honor. We've been on uh, Mount Rushmore. How about your faces. You read your face tattooed on somebody. We've been uh, Mount Rushmore. I've been a pinup on someone's arm wow. um there is the last supper like the entire radio station all the djs I love it. I love <laughs> it. some classic ones but this podcast I, i'm i'm like geeking out because literally it started a year ago congratulations right it's yes. been yeah june a year. last year right I think a, I year, that. a year today yeah. so i listened to you and john feldy and i grabbed matt i was like we need to listen to this thing again it's amazing like he's just telling these great stories about being a shoe salesman before <laughs> you know, Goldfinger started and everything like that. So how are you racking up these? Are you just calling your friends and you're like, dude, I started a podcast. You got to come on with me. Yeah. You know, at first, so my uh, producer partner of the podcast, his name's Chris, he, he plays bass in the band Punchline. For mm. kids. And so Chris, uh, he's also uh, manages me outside of Less Than Jake. And we started working together last uh, April. It's been a little over a year now. And he's the one that said, you know, I have a bunch of different things I think you should do. And one of them was a podcast. And I was completely dismissive off the bat. I said, no, I'm like, everyone has a podcast. Most of them suck. I don't listen to podcasts. I hate them. I, you know, and he is like, but no, yours will be different. I'm like, how? And, you know, how am I going to be unique and different? He said, because you're not going to go on and just have like, you know, a lot of the podcasts, a lot of the music podcasts, just like, 
Hey, what's going on? Not much. What have you been up to? Cool. Where'd you get the band name? And, you know, do all the, all the questions you're going to ask someone in, in, in a quote unquote typical interview. And Chris said, no, we have to have an objective every show. It has to have a theme. And I want it to be songwriting because I had been doing, I've been doing custom songs and jingles for a couple of years now um, for people and for businesses. And he's like, this, this would be a great way to promote your songwriting. And you know, a lot of people, and it could be interesting. You'd break down the song and I'm like, all right, you know, I'll think about it. And I slept on it and I just woke up the next morning and I'm like, without even telling Chris, I just texted like 12 people, John <laughs> Feldman being one of them. Like, would you be on a podcast if I did it? It's about songwriting. I want I want to break down these songs. And uh, in the first week I did 10 episodes in one week. Wow. Yeah. So I just started stockpiling them. And, it's nice because uh, with podcasts, it's just, it's just this, it's like literally, and you're just talking to your friends. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It was and, the perfect year to start it, obviously with being stuck at home as well. Well, uh, that was the, that was the other reason uh, that I, I was hesitant because I had told Chris, I said, man, cause people were just coming out of the woodworks. And I know because <laughs> I, I work with a, my rep at a, a Sweetwater is a music company where I buy equipment from and my rep over there. I was talking to him early in pandemic. He said, our business is up 150% and we're selling podcast kits. Basically they call them. It's a microphone and an interface. And you know, you don't know how we're we can't keep things in stock because everyone's sitting at home, but it's been a great way. Um, not being able to go out. I mean, I live in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee, so there's nothing to do where I live. There's no, if I, if I wanted to go see a show, I got to drive 90 minutes round trip, 45 minutes down to Knoxville. Oh, so yeah. basically, you know, but I'm the band has never stopped touring. So I'm, I'd be home for a week, two, three band goes back out. So at my social life is on the road, seeing people. So what the podcast did for me was this, it actually made me feel like I was still hanging out with my friends and it, every, once a week or so I was able to get that, that human interaction that, you know, we, we all, we all kind of need. Well, it was a treat for us. Cause we felt uh, like we were hanging out with you guys. It, it was a, it was a really neat, uh, experience for us. Are you going to continue producing the podcast, even though uh, it's life on the road is going to pick up? Oh yeah. I mean, the, the podcast now at this point, you know, it was a vehicle for me to push all my other stuff, my book, my songwriting. I do uh, video consultations where I produce, arrange songs, field questions about the music business. So I had all these projects, but what's happened is, is all the projects that I've been doing they are all to promote the podcast. It's, 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 it's seriously, it's went, it's went the other way around to yeah. where now um, I'm getting about uh, uh, 15 to 20,000 uh, listeners plays a week uh, for, for each episode, plus the back catalog that sits out there, the back episodes each week. So now it's getting into where I'm, uh, I'm getting interest uh, from advertisers and such. Right. So it's actually turned into something that, you know, my Chris couldn't have been more right. And I couldn't have been more wrong about the whole <laughs> thing. So we're going to take it. Uh, we, we both have said, we're going to take it to when it's no longer fun. And the great part about it is to answer your question, Marissa, earlier, you had said, we had, would you start calling your friends initially? Yes. And now the great part is, is we have publicists and people writing us. So it's taken the weight off of me every week going, okay, who am I going to find now? You know, Hey, Dickie, want to come on this week? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Which is so great. Has there been any surprises that even got you some stories or song lyrics or anything that have blown um, your mind? A ton of them, you know, just Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray comes to mind the episode with him because, you know, people had this and he, and he really was self-deprecating and can make fun of himself and uh, I, I gained a, a true friend like Mark and I text and, and we talk now. He's really funny. And we both come from like the 80s metal background. We have a lot to talk about, a lot in common. But the fan reaction to his episode, they all, everybody, I can't tell you how people was like, man, and even these are Mark's words. Yeah, I'm just the bleach blonde tip uh, hair peroxide douchey guy, you know? And they're like, we all thought he was that until we listened to the episode. He's, he's so much more than that, you know? So just things like that, just um, being able to stump artists, you know, being able to tell Mark Hoppus that uh, you do realize we're only 23 seconds into what's my age again and we're already at the chorus and to have him just <laughs> like start laughing. <laughs> oh my God, really? I'm like, yeah, you know, just... Things like that, that people that wrote a song 20, 25 years ago that never, ever, you know, never thought of that. And, you know, that that that's the cool part is being able to every week. Also, at the end, nine times out of 10, the, the guest saying to me that was different and that was cool 
Like I could do, I could do another hour of that. It didn't, you know, didn't bore me and, and didn't, you know, it wasn't the same old, same old. Wait, I'm looking up the What's My Age Again lyrics because I actually brought it into work the next day um, because what was the first line that none of us knew what it was? Oh, the cologne line. Oh, yes. you, yeah, you guys talked about this for I always minutes. thought it was I walk alone, but it's I work alone. All of us. We've been listening. We've been playing that song. They've yeah. been playing it since Y100, so since it came out. Yeah. And I just played it. I was like, what do you guys all hear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I work alone. I work alone to get the feeling right. Yep. Yep. Blowing my mind. We've all been singing it incorrectly yeah. for two yeah. decades. And now that I think about it, I don't think I've changed what I sing either. <laughs> yeah. Permanently. And that's okay. the crazy thing too, is just the the lyrics uh when you do a internet search, you know, Google or whatever, like the lyrics are always wrong. So I have to go through with a fine-tooth comb. And it was really hard on an episode I did recently with this New Zealand band called The Beths, mm -hmm. because when they sing, they have an accent. So I'm listening and the lyrics are all messed up online. I'm going through it and and I just continued to flub this woman's lyrics, Liz. I just kept messing it up and she's laughing. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, the internet's wrong and I'm even worse than what was on the internet, you know? So it's it's sometimes sometimes a challenge, but it's it's a fun challenge. Very cool. Well, kudos. You definitely uh, do your research when you do those podcasts and it comes across and it's awesome and it sounds great. And somebody who's been listening to these type of interviews and doing these type of interviews for years, uh, like you said earlier, everybody thinks podcast is easy. We all noticed it when like every comedian in the world started a podcast and they would sit around and just, just like you said, Hey dude, yeah, what's going well, on? <laughs> the other thing too, is you guys know, radio is not easy. You know, I've had 30 years of, of practice of being a front man in a band, I can talk and command an audience, but coming over here. And that was the other thing I told Chris is um, on the show, maybe early on, there was a couple, but I don't even as much as say hell or damn on the show. I wanted a complete 180 of who people think I am. And I, that's been the greatest comment. He was like, I can't believe it's the guy from less than Jake talking. You know, it doesn't seem like, you know, the, what, the crazy stuff I say on stage. I didn't want it to be that. I didn't want it to be eighth grade potty humor, which I think is hilarious. I'll always laugh at fart, but I didn't want that to be, to be part of the show. I wanted it to be, to be different. And uh, what's also cool now is what's happening is uh, had, a, had some comments uh, every once in a while now, uh, every week or two will come in. It's like, this is my favorite podcast, or I love this podcast. And uh, I had no idea this was the same. I, I had, I've never even heard less than Jake, you know, which is oh, very which cool. Is really, oh, awesome. in, which is really interesting because now I'm able to have another vehicle and another way to promote the band, which I never thought that that would happen either. So again, tip of the hat to Chris. Yeah, it's such a cool thing that you can really get really nerdy and like really like, you know, really wonky about all these things. And it's cool to like, expand upon that stuff because it's so like you said it's so like quick that you're like oh i really want to like figure out this part and figure out where this comes from and you can get like in the real like nitty-gritty of all that stuff it's really love the concept it's so cool thank you you know and i and the other thing as i straddle the line i try to keep it in layman's terms i try to have and i've had this comp this is another nice compliment i had as people say I don't know one thing about music. I hardly even knew what a chorus of a song meant, but I can I can follow and get through an episode of yours, which is why I stopped short of, I did a, a podcast recently with Ultimate Guitar and they were going, it was called a rig rundown. They had me go through all my equipment and my guitars and stuff. And the guy even said, man, I love your podcast. Why don't you get into gear? I said, because you do a gear podcast. If I get into gear, people just turn it off. They're, they're just be like, if, if you don't know, like, yeah, I'm using a humbucker pickup and a 64 Strat through a, you know, orange amplifier. Like, no, you're going to lose people. So I have to keep it kind of, you know, it can still be nerdy in, 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 uh, in a way, but it, it, it can't fall too far to the other side to where you. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, Marissa and I love music. We grew up in the, in the ska punk world. Uh, Nick too. Nick as well. <laughs> yes. But uh, we don't know. We don't know music. Yeah. Like, I was literally I, like, I play, stay in your lane. <laughs> I play a iPod really well, but I, I don't know anything when it comes to gear. So you would lose, you would lose us on that, but we're, we're fascinated with the, with the music. Um, and uh, it, it's pretty cool. Like you said it earlier that you thought Vinny's naming of the band was kind of a joke and, and, with the cassette tapes in the beginning. And we've heard that through different documentaries. It was always sort of the, the theme of, of that Scott movement was, it was just all potty humor, joking around, goofing around. Mm -hmm. And you bring this serious element to the podcast that really breaks down uh, and, and shows people, Hey, there's some really good talent behind uh, <laughs> th th this music. It's <laughs> yeah. not just guys joking around. So it's, it, it, yeah, uh, it's funny, you know, it, you know, 
you coming from the genre that we that we do and we got lumped in with a lot of those bands but uh the, the ska bands of the ska punk bands of the 90s a lot of them had wacky lyrics and we, we had some songs of course that were jokey and wacky but there was always a serious undertone to to our lyrics and i think that that's kind of why we've had, we've stood the test of time too. There was a little more substance there than just party on a Saturday night. Let's skank on a Saturday night or whatever, which is cool. That's fun, but you know, there's a there's a little bit more depth to to what we were singing about, which I think resonated with people. Yeah, uh, yeah, because you guys are approaching thirty years, right? Yeah, thirty years next uh, next Tuesday, July fourteenth, nineteen ninety. Wow, when we started. That's was that your first gig or just like when you gig. went into the garage? In and- Florida. No, the, so the tracings of the band go back to about November of 91, because okay. that's when Vinny and I did that first four track demo that I then took to Gainesville. And I started passing out probably in January 92, but we played our first show as Less Than Jake in, in uh, July of 92. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I saw, I first saw you in 97 Warp Tour. Which I, I think you guys also hold the uh, the title of most warp tours. Yes, I was just on uh, <laughs> the Warp Tour podcast with Kevin Lyman. We, we we talked about it. Yeah, we did. Uh, to date, we've done four hundred and forty one warp tour shows. God. That's way incredible. Over, way over a year of my life, and I wonder why I'm you know clinically insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But like that is it's literally how we can define our lives, our generation. It's just like. Mm-hmm. We're a warp tour generation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like right above the MTV generation. Yep. It it's, was our summers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's we 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 were the we were the fan base chasing you guys around the country. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean I, I I lived it, you know, and and I have nothing but good memories. And I know that that's a big reason of why the band is still doing what we're doing, because every uh every two years we were, you know cultivate i always say it's like a farmer tilling the soil we're out there it's another group of 13 14 15 year old kids that are going to their going to their first concert like it, it continued to keep our fan base uh uh going and uh yeah it's great matt's not gonna say it, but he was on warp tour for a little bit too I, I skated on warp tour for a little bit so i i i was uh i was touring with you guys for a couple of those years but uh before the liability uh, insurance got too high and they took the skaters and the and so, yeah off. they took the they took the vert ramp away yeah. uh, we'll but, put a few uh, more hot dog stands in here yeah, come on verizon you can set your tent up over there you know we got room now wait I is that, that what happened the, the, yes it was basically they got rid of the vert ramp they got rid of the motorcross well, put, you, like, started having, ramp in. you started having knuckleheads i woke up one morning i didn't see this happen but i woke up one morning in uh denver colorado and they would get local guys to come out and this local guy decides right when the ramp gets set up at eight in the morning that he's going to gun it. And he goes over this ramp and he came down and the handlebar went up through his neck, through his cheek. Yeah, and I'm it, glad I missed that one. Yeah, they basically, <laughs> basically impaled him. And that was, that was, I think, 2001. I think that was the last year for the motocross that they did, they did it. Yeah. Too much, too much liability. Yeah. It's uh, and they probably make more money off the hot dog stands. It's, um, it's true, <laughs> and merch booths, all the merch booths. Us humans just can't have nice things. Yeah. Yeah. They took those away from us a long time ago uh, because of our stupidity. But uh, no, it's uh, it's going to be really fun to to see you guys in AC. And uh, yeah, we're excited. It's it's just feels good to have live music back. Yeah, there's just something about like being in a crowd and feeling safe around people and getting vaccinated and we're like on a good path to to wellness. Yeah, I think everybody is, uh, you know, they're, I, I kind of been saying this all along that I don't know if there's going to be a gradual, I think it's going to be, you know, an, an AC now that the, I guess the mask mandate's been lifted in, in Jersey. Yes. I think it's just going to feel like it did 15 months ago. I think it's like it's not even missed a beat. That's that's what I think. I think it's just we we can account for that. We uh, like we said, we were down. Uh, we just got back actually from Atlantic City, and uh, the mask mandate is lifted, and it's a shit show. It is get ready. <laughs> it's uh, it, oh, yeah. it's like they're they're just going to shoot you right into. 15 months ago, like nothing ever happened. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to be good. It's gonna, yeah. You know, playing, uh, playing in the middle of a field the day before uh, is going to be easy because people are going to pre- presumably there's nothing else to do in the middle of Pennsylvania, but get hammered. Uh, and then everyone's <laughs> going to be drunk when we get on. So these, these aren't even really shows. They're just going to be, <laughs> I said, all I got to do is show up and stand there, you know, but we know you guys won't, you know, you, well, you guys will bring it and we'll yeah. all be excited. And like I said, we'll all be talking about, you know, what was your first yeah. show back? And it'll be less than Jake, yeah. which well, is really cool. cool. Yeah. 
Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, really, really appreciate you hanging out with us today. Um, I do have one request or one suggestion for the podcast, yes. I should say. If uh, you need like a really big episode, I think get Keenan and Kel and talk about the Good Burger song. <laughs> you know, that it, we actually, uh, Kel Mitchell is the one that wrote the lyrics to that. Stop it, really? Yeah. Well, I'm a dude, no. she's a dude. Kel wrote the lyrics. Um, I wrote the song. So I would love to get Kel on. That's been talked about. So I'm going to try to do, Keenan had nothing to do with it, but if he wants to sit in, I doubt we'd get him. He's, a, he, he's, he might be too big for his britches with his SNL gig. But, uh, and I think, a TV show now. I think Kel Mitchell might be attainable. <laughs> I think I saw him in a commercial recently. I think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> or, we get get the, a, or we get a Kel sound alike to come on. You know? There you go. Yeah. It's podcast. It's all fair. Um, Very cool. Awesome. Well, again, thank you. We look forward to seeing you uh, Saturday, Friday night in Bethel and Saturday in Atlantic City. That's right. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and uh, a live stream. Wait, I just saw this. You, Jarrett from Bowling from Soup and... Uh, Ian Grushka from Newfound Glory. That's it. Yeah. And you're doing like a trivia? Yeah, so it's going to be Saturday, July 12th. It's our year uh, celebration, a year birthday party. Uh, it'll be at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, there's my my uh, my time <laughs> zone. Uh, <laughs> anal retentiveness showing again. Uh, Eastern time, uh, you can go to the, uh, find it on the uh, Krista Makes a Podcast Facebook group, and it'll be posted in other places. So. And you guys just like music trivia, just try to stump each other? Yeah, so Chris, uh, the producer, Chris Vefalios, Chris is going to host it, and me, Jarrett, and Ian are going to be the contestants, and I'm sure it'll be ridiculous. And I don't know much about it because Chris Chris has all the details ironed out, but he didn't want to give me too much. I don't know anything more than Ian and Jarrett do because he, he wanted to be an even playing field. So Okay. Well, I good luck to you. We obviously, we'll be rooting for you. <laughs> You'll be walking into shark-infested waters, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be watching, and we'll see you next weekend. Okay, thanks. Thanks, See you Chris. then. See ya. Bye. Have a great day.